Welcome back to the Guido's Chop Shop, where today on the bench here we have a big black box. Let's see what we've got in here. You probably already know because you've probably read the title. I have had more people ask me about this than any other blaster. For some reason, everyone wants to see the M24. And here it is. Is that supposed to be a suppressor can? That's huge. Ooh, a little telescope that's uh, not very useful pretend optic safety um, bipod a strap nobody cares about any of this I don't even know what that part is what is that? I'm sure I'll work it out. Alright. Into the crux of it. Magazine. This is the barrel and the bolt. I guess you could call this the furniture stock, whatever you want to call it. It's um, it's pretty nice looking. Like, well, that's cool. That's a, that's a nice looking piece. Obviously the. Uh, Bits go in there, and I think that uh, I think that is actually how you assemble it. You literally click that in there. It's probably a screw or two which go in here. All right, and then the mag goes awkwardly up the front there. It's kind of odd location. <laughs> I think it should be here. Let's not get into that though. Alright, uh, I'm going to whack some screws in this and see how we go. Okay, so I put this together and I played with it a little bit. I chronoed it and mucked around. And overall, it's kind of fun, I guess. Like, the bolt action's kind of... Uh, cute. I am more interested in blasters that you can skirmish with. This is not one of them because you just you would you wouldn't be competitive on the field trying to reload bolt action after every shot. When I chronoed it it was pushing 150 FPS so um yeah I don't know <laughs> but um and that doesn't really matter because what we're going to do now is tear it apart. Now I suppose that um, you might have seen when, when I put this together there is four screws that basically hold the barrel in. They're Allen head screws and they come with the Allen key for when you're, uh, it comes in the box, so. 
if you're not like me and you don't have a bucket full of allen keys you don't have to worry because it comes included all right four screws uh, take the mag out too and your uh, stock just comes off now yeah, this is the business end I'm going to take this crappy scope off too because well it's useless anyway Now what I've got here is a bag of goodies from gelballmod.com Looks like we've got an array of different springs uh, a barrel, aluminium is it aluminium? yeah aluminium uh, looks like a metal bolt handle and bolt Carrier, all the various bits and pieces. Uh, looks like a T piece. And the plunger nozzle, also metal, quite possibly stainless. Stainless? Maybe. Alright. Let's get going on this. Uh, let's just start with taking out all the screws, which is usually what I start with when I don't know what I'm doing. I've never had one of these before. I've never disassembled one of these before. So it's going to be a learning experience for all of us. Good to see they didn't sting on the tiny self-tapping screws. Brings me back to the early Gem 8 days. Alright, so it looks like I've undone all those screws there. Pop this thing apart, hey? Alright. So now I can start to see what some of these bits and pieces are. Obviously that looks like a release. Obviously the bolt handle. Various bits and pieces, alright. Most of this is fairly straightforward. Um, the one thing that I'm not 100% sure about is the barrel replacement. Um, 
Alright. Okay, so I've just worked out that this thing has a spring in it and it will shoot out across the room at any given moment. So uh, keep an eye on that piece. Um, barrel. I'm interested in this barrel because I don't know how I'm going to get the upgraded barrel into this one without breaking it basically. Um, the bolt replacement seems fairly straightforward. This is just a direct copy of the uh, bolt that's in it, just out of stainless. Uh, I think all the parts except for this one might be replaced I can't see a replacement for this piece so looks like everything but that now this barrel is actually glued together there's a seam all the way down there. Um, so I think the only way to get this apart is to get a knife and sort of gently run it into the seam and sort of prise it apart while cutting it. And uh, just take your time and do it bit by bit. Don't try to force it. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we can get it without breaking it. Separate it and then uh, replace the barrel and glue it back together. Now this is going to take some time and some patience, so. This is actually coming apart um, easier than I first expected. I've just been forcing the knife down into the groove and then running it down. And as you can hear, it's coming apart as I slide the knife down. It's actually coming apart really easily. Um, once you get it started, it just sort of starts to come apart. So it's not too difficult. Just uh, just keep at it. Keep patient. Uh, don't try to rush. Just gently run the knife down and pry it apart. And then swap sides so you get equal, equal distance on both sides. And eventually you will get there. Okay, so I got the barrel apart, split down the seam there. Uh, took a little bit of patience, I guess, but um, eventually it just sort of comes apart and then you've got access to your barrel. Uh, mine seemed to have a bit of goop in here. I don't know if that's like some sort of lube or some sort of... Uh, I've only fired it a few times around the workshop here, um, just for funs, just to see what it's like. Uh, and I don't think it's busted up gels, so I don't know. Here's an interesting feature, see that? Can you, let me have a look. I don't know if you can see that, but, um, if you look down the barrel, there we go. Focus. Look at that. You see that? There's a detent in the barrel. So what that is, is a spring and a um, 
well, when you look at the new one that comes with it. So there's a spring here and a round detent here which goes into the side of this T-piece here. See that weird little thing on the side there? And there's a, the detent springs out and pushes into the side of the barrel like that. So that the balls don't fall out the barrel when when you've got one loaded. Gonna get into the upgrade. So the kit that I've got here from Gelball Mod comes with aluminium barrel. Looks like it's the same length of aluminium barrel. Uh, no, it's a little bit longer. Uh, I guess some of it's inside the T piece, so uh, yeah, same length. Same length, there you go. Uh, and it comes with a new T-piece as well, so I'll assemble that new T-piece with its crazy detent and everything and put the aluminium barrel into that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, all the kit, all the V2 upgrade kit from Gel Blaster, gelballmod.com, gelballmod.com, don't want to get it wrong. Um, it's got a cat on the side of it, it's cute, and it says uh, 2.0, GJ 2.0 on the side, it also says some other weird things, Cool Play Electronic Technology, Shenzhen Cool Play, cool, alright, um, so I'm going to go through putting that together very shortly, one thing I've also noticed is that the plunger that this comes with, has a very small o-ring focus it's got a very small o-ring but it's also got another o-ring it comes with two o-rings it comes with another one which is even smaller now i've never seen anything like this before it's got two a sort of small o-ring and a smaller o-ring and there's two of them. And I had to look this up because I've never seen this before. But apparently they both go on there. Which boggles the mind. I'm not really sure how that's supposed to work. But um, I guess we're all going to find out very shortly. Um, so just before I get putting all this in, I just want to have a good look at the parts that come in this kit here. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that I've got three springs on the table here. Uh, varying thicknesses, although interestingly enough, the only one that actually fits into this is that one. The other three springs that it came with don't actually fit in there. So there are a larger diameter uh, of spring. So I think the standard, well, that's sorry, that's not the standard one, but it's the one that actually fits in. Um, it's 12, 12 mils in diameter. These ones are 14. And my lights just went out. So the, what looks to be the more powerful springs, um, let's measure them. So we've got, it's 1.3, a 1.4, and a 1.5. And on this one here is 1.1. Uh, so, I guess I'll order them in order of thickness. These will probably go in with a little bit of tinkering. But uh, it's interesting. I assume that these are probably um, some sort of generic spring and this one's one that 
is designed for this kit. I don't know if um I don't know if jawballmod.com sent me extra springs because they love me or whether this is actually what what is supposed to come in the kit. But um we'll find out, I guess. The other thing I want to look at is this um the just the, the quality of these materials. It looks like so it looks like the plunger is alloy uh machined. It's quite uh precise, like the threads and everything on this quite good quality. Uh the only one thing I can see is they've had an error in their CNC machine obviously here. The slots come all the way along and then go on right. Right there. And it seems that they haven't corrected the error when they flipped the the piece because they've got the exact same error right on the other side. I don't know if you can see that well in the camera. Focus. Yes. That's funny that the error mirrors. You can see it mirrored on this side as well. I'm sure that's not going to uh, affect the um, the way it works. It's just something I noticed. Now this looks like it's alloy. I've got a big magnet here. Definitely alloy. Um, this here looks to be stainless steel. Although, uh, pro just by the fact that the magnet is slightly sticking to it, and like this is a super strong magnet too, so like, like to give you an idea of how strong this magnet is, it's like, yeah, it's a strong magnet. And uh, so that's, I guess, some low grade stainless because the magnet's sticking to it. The front of this is also stainless. But it looks like that's that's a much higher grade of stainless, there's not the magnet's not sticking to it. I guess more alloy content or something. Stainless steel is meant to be non-magnetic, just so you know. Um I guess the more iron content in it makes it magnetic. I don't know. Science. Um the handle, the the, the bolt handle is alloy. Not magnetic. The uh, spring guide, stainless. Again, not magnetic. Uh, that I guess that's probably to do with the either the end piece or perhaps the bearings. I think the yeah, this end piece is probably it's magnetic, so it's probably just a, a different grade of stainless. I don't know if that interests you at all, but that's alloy. Alloy? Is it? I don't know what that is. It's an alloy of sorts, but it doesn't look like your standard sort of. Uh, doesn't look like your standard sort of aluminium. That I don't know. It's um, it's a cast piece, not magnetic. An alloy of sorts, I guess. All right. Now let's go ahead and put this all together. Now, um, I should probably point out some of these bits and pieces, like these uh, polymer bushes. They will need to be glued in place because they are um, fairly loose. Um, I'm going to glue this, the end piece of this, because this is two machined pieces. Uh, you've got your end cap, which threads on. Um, I assume the plunger threads on as well on this end. I'm not 100% sure if that's threaded on or if that's one machined piece. Um... It is hard to tell. Focus. It's 
threaded here, but it ends, so... I don't know, that could be one machined piece. If it is, it's nice. It's, it's a nice piece of work. But I will want to glue this polymer piece in uh, in place because it will eventually work its way off that and just fall down. Um, so I'm going to glue that in. So I'm just going to put some glue just on that thread there. Just tighten this on there. Put some more on this thread here. Tighten this one on there. And put a touch more on there. Tighten this one on. Alright. That's tight, that's tight. Get some glue on there, it should dry shortly and uh, hold those on. Uh, I suppose you could probably do Loctite as well. Um, I, I got glue, so I'm to put some around the nozzle as well. Um, let's get this nozzle seal on there. Don't want that coming off. Uh, there's something else I wanted to glue on as well. Ah, yes. The uh, spring retainer is fairly loosely screwed on there, so I'll just dab some super glue in there. Screw that in as well. Not too much. I mean, I, I like to think I put enough so that if it um, can, if I want to remove it later, I can just crack the glue and it should come loose. But um, just from the vibration of uh, the blaster, it shouldn't come loose. Now, I didn't want to be fornicating with arachnoids, um, so I wanted to just go straight onto this big spring and go nuts. However, try as I might, I can't fit the 14mm spring in the 13mm hole. So I'm going to go with this one, just for the fact that it's going to fit. Um, I might look at ways to try and get these ones to fit later. Right now, I'm going to go with that smaller one. Now, I don't know which way these O-rings go, whether it goes big big one, then small one, or small one, then big one, or or wh whether you're supposed to use one or both, or... I don't know. Keeping in mind that I've never done... I've never even seen an M24 before today. Um, I'm just going to go with that. Uh, I did look up a little bit of internet, and uh, that seems to be how people are doing it, putting the two there. So, that's what I'll go with. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I don't understand why the O-ring is that thin, or why there's two. Um, I, I don't get it, but I'll go with it for now, um, and we'll see how she goes. Uh, I am going to... Wax some oil down here so that uh, this all gets lubed up. I suppose I put some on the O-rings as well here. Well, if I've already oiled the um, cylinder, it's not really much point adding additional oil, but I'll go with it. And. Let's see how we go. Slide that one down in there. Seems nice and smooth. Alright, now I'm going to try and get these O-rings 
to go in there nicely. This top section is threaded. So it's not really ideal for pushing O-rings through. Um, so I'm being particularly gentle with them. Just trying to make sure they don't squash or cross over. Okay, that took away too much time and concentration to get those O-rings in right. Um, and I'm a little bit OCD, so I know there's a lot of people out there who aren't me who are not going to do that. <laughs> um, Alright, add some of the schmoo off my hands and screw this uh, cylinder head on. Okay, there are some flats machined into the side of this, so you can use a 14mm spanner to... It's only got like a millimeter of uh, meat there to grab on, so you can use, as I said, you can use your 14mm spanner to uh, get in there and tighten it, or if you don't have a 14mm, you can use your thumb detecting nut fucker to uh, clamp on there as tight as you can and give it give it a bit of a spin. Um, don't recommend it, but that's on there now. All right, the next thing uh, I'm going to look at is getting the uh, bolt handle attached on the back here. The thing that surprises me is what it didn't come with is the detent. For, for for this um, bolt handle, like this this is the detent here, and uh, it actually goes up in here, and then when you put that together, it uh, is what lock sort of. Locks the position for your um, for your bolt handle. That's just locks into these two little nipples, those dimples, dimples, nipples, dimples. Locks into those little dimples, um, and yeah, it doesn't it doesn't come with that. It doesn't come with the detent or the spring. So you've got to remove that from your plastic standard bolt. You can do that just by taking the Phillips head screw out of the back of it and. Um, doing that, there it is, Phillips head screw there, so you just pop that end off, take the detent out, uh, you can see I don't have the detent in there, so this handle doesn't lock in anymore, but um, yeah, so you take that out and it's going to go in here. Uh, Alright, I'm just going to start whacking that together. Okay. I'll just move these springs aside for the time being because I don't need them. Um, bolt handle on there. Detent in that little hole there. And then we'll get this on. Yeah, it only goes on one way because it's keyed. It has to be this way, like that, and then uh, in the end here we have an Allen screw, which goes in there. I've got an Allen key here. Oh, conveniently, the right size. All right, do that up. Another thing which um, doesn't appear to come with a kit is this uh, little piece. It is plastic, but it does seem to have a metal 
bar down the middle of it, so I guess it's strong enough. Uh, it's like the spring... Uh, how do you call it? Not the retainer, but it um, is the... Uh, the holder in the that's what holds it in the receiver um, I'm sure there's a technical name for that that's what goes into this slot and holds the spring when you pull the bolt back all right now um, I'm gonna go into a bit more detail on this receiver here Okay, so what I've got here is the receiver. I'm just going to take this piece out for um, just so we can have it completely empty. Um, this is what it looks like, obviously. I didn't go into a lot of detail when I pulled this apart because I just literally just pulled it apart and went with it. So, I mean, that's, that's it. In all its glory. Now, there's a few little components inside this uh, trigger group and probably one of the most annoying ones is this little safety here. It is a little spring and a little plate which the spring sits in and then that sits in here like that it just sits in there like that and so when the bolt handle is downwards you can pull the trigger uh, and when it's uh, which way so I think that's downwards let you pull the trigger and then when that bolt handle is upwards then you can't pull the trigger and that relates to this little notch here so basically when you pull the bolt handle, you pull it down, um, it allows you to be able to pull the trigger. So it's just a safety so that you can't pull the trigger with the bolt handle up. Um, so just be careful of that one because all these components are sprung. So, you know, if you flick them, they'll spring out. Uh, probably one of the ones which would have flicked out when you opened the uh, receiver up, I know that happened to me, um, is this one. So this you got the spring here like that and there's a little hole there and on this particular one it's the upgraded alloy one it's got a shaft which is separate. The plastic one's all integral, it's molded. Uh, so with this one put your little shaft through like that and put the folded end of that spring into the hole and then the coil goes over the shaft like that and all right so you should be able to get the spring in there like that put the shaft down and push the spring into this plastic part of the receiver just here like that so that that spring is pushing it up and of course when I flicked it just then I flicked the safety out so there pop that back in okay so make sure all the springs are in there seated and make sure that this one's pushing back up because that's what actually catches the bolt when you pull it back. Uh, next is the trigger. Now the trigger doesn't change. Um, I guess they've determined that it's strong enough. So it is just the standard trigger. Um, so that just pops in there like that. Then the next sprung part is the mag release. So you've got two parts of this mag release. You've got the actual catch and the button. Um, so you'll see an angled plane here and an angled plane here. So those two angled planes meet together like that. And then 
it all sits in there like that so that when the button is pushed it retracts the mag catch here that's all very simple um, that's all there is to that now this slot that you see here is where the little plastic part that I was talking about pops into when you put the bolt back in all coming together quite well so far all right so the next thing before we get too far here is the barrel so I've got this barrel which I cut open immediately I can see where those screws and nuts are supposed to go these ones here uh, they're these screws hold those two nuts in um, I don't need to use them because mine are fine so what I will be doing is uh, getting my aluminium barrel and putting it into there and just gluing this one back together um, it'd be nice if there was some sort of way that I could um, Join this together without making it as permanent as glue, but it doesn't seem like there is any way. I'll just have to put a dab of glue here and there and not go too overboard. So if I do ever have to take it apart again, hopefully not, but uh, I just want to make it a bit easier on myself. So I got my uh, new two piece here. I'm just going to put a dab of super glue on these three points there. I've got the detent in there. And now I'm just going to whack this piece in here. Like that. All right, and I'm just gonna place the barrel in there. And I'll just put like a dab of super glue on some of these uh, spots, and then stick the barrel back together. Okay, now with the barrel glued together, with the barrel inside the barrel, I'll bring the receiver down here, and this should slide in to here, and I believe, pop in there without knocking too much of the springed innards all over the place so that looks good so far let's get the other half and screw it all together just carefully try and lift this bolt handle without popping everything out Get everything lined up, all the posts. And 
All right. Now it's just a matter of whacking these screws back in and testing. All right, now I'm just going to whack it back in the uh, stock. And go in. Okay. screws back in all right and there she is guess we've got a chrono on now okay so I took the M24 to the chrono. I chronoed it a bunch of times and come up with an average of 264, which I think is an acceptable amount. Um, there was a lot of other readings and whatnot, but as you can see, an average there, 264. Um, I don't know. It, it was all over the shop. Again, like I, I got some low readings around the 150 mark but then I got some higher readings in the 300s as well so um, averaging 264 I think I don't know if it was uh, whether it comes down to the ammunition whether the, the the gels that I was using weren't up to scratch I'm currently a little bit low on milkies, so I was just using some uh, oranges and blues to do the testing, but um, it definitely seems to be a step up from the standard um, bolt that uh, comes in it. And it does, I mean, the standard bolt does seem a bit flimsy and plastic, so it's definitely a step up. Well worth doing the upgrade. You're not going to snap this bolt handle off any time in a hurry because it's aluminium. Um, as for these springs, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna find a way. I'm gonna find a way to get this thing in there. I want to see what this blaster does with this. <laughs> um, but for the time being, I couldn't uh, easily get them into the bolt I, I don't know uh, yeah they're just they're just too large in diameter but having said that this is a fun blaster I, I wasn't I wasn't into it at first I wasn't into it and um, I'm more of a skirmish blaster kind of guy I like the blasters you can actually skirmish with like in a skirmish you wouldn't be able to use this but for plinking cans at home this is actually a fun blaster. This is a nice, fun little blaster. The scope that comes with it is absolute garbage, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, you should see what it looks like. This is like... Like, that. that's the scope. It's so bad. Look, this is, this is the zoom. Ooh, look at that zoom. Can you see it? 
yeah, it's, it is what it is. It's a plastic toy, but, but the blaster is, is quite fun. Um, so I'm going to put the link to the blaster. I'm going to put the link to the kit that I got from gelballmod.com. Um, and while I'm here, don't forget, I've got, um, some other cool stuff. So I've got the Low Guido's Chop Shop patches. I've got the, still got a couple of the um, limited edition Low Guido's Chop Shop Gen 8 mags. So i still got a couple of them too. And I've got um, the Low Guido's Chop Shop logo camouflage t-shirt. Now that's on the back, the, the logo, it, the front is just camo, but the back has the Low Guido's Chop Shop logo on it. I didn't want to get like two out there with the logo being that you kind of want camouflage on game day, so uh, they're available. Um, I'm going to put the link down in the description to get the mags or the patches. You're going to have to shoot me an email, uh, the t-shirts are on a, um, a different website. I'll put the link down below. Uh, also, if you're not wanting to buy a patch or a mag or a t-shirt and you still want to support the channel, buy me a coffee. There's a link in... I'm going to put all these links. My description is going to be full of links. Click all the links. Click the links and have a good time. This is a fun blaster. Get yourself one. Um... What can I say? All right. That's it for me. I will see you next time. Peace out.